In the last century, we actually discovered the key to the solar system, a breakthrough that promised to carry humans and hundreds of tons of cargo faster and cheaper than ever before. That key is nuclear power. Now, if SpaceX were to use this on Starship instead of chemical propellant, the round trip to Mars wouldn't take a whole year anymore. It could be cut down to just a few weeks. Sounds like science fiction, right? But it's actually something that's already been tested and presented before. So, is a nuclear-powered starship truly feasible? Let's dive into it all in today's episode of Alpha Tech. When we think of nuclear energy, what usually comes to mind is something terrifying, a power often tied to the military, capable of wiping out entire cities if used the wrong way. That's exactly why no one dares to mess with North Korea. Just kidding. But to put things in perspective, imagine a massive fuel tank weighing 5,000 tons. That's the amount of propellant needed to send a giant rocket-like starship all the way to Mars. If that much fuel were to explode, the total chemical energy released would be roughly equal to 16,000 tons of TNT. It could completely destroy structures out to roughly 1.6 kilometers, truly catastrophic and extremely dangerous. Now, here's the chilling part. That same amount of energy could be produced by nuclear fission using only 82 kilograms of uranium-235 with just 1% of it undergoing fission. And if hypothetically all of it were to react, you'd only need 820 grams, roughly the weight of four smartphones, to unleash the power of a nuclear bomb. That's insane. Yes, it's dangerous, but it's also incredibly powerful. That's why nuclear energy is often seen as the key for humanity to travel across the entire solar system. With its immense power and far smaller fuel requirements, it could completely change how we build spacecraft. Take Starship, for example. Inside that giant stainless steel vehicle, about 56% of its volume is just fuel tanks, while only a little over 10% is reserved for payload, the part that actually carries crew or cargo. But if we were to switch to nuclear propulsion, the fuel and reactor systems might take up only 15 to 20% of the total volume. That means the rest of that massive interior could be transformed into living quarters, storage bays, or even laboratories, all while still having enough power to travel anywhere in the solar system. Yes, that's the true potential of nuclear energy. Interestingly, research into using nuclear energy for rockets actually began back in the last century especially with a concept known as the Nuclear Thermal Rocket Engine, or NTP. The first official program started in 1955 called Project Rover, led by the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission at Los Alamos National Laboratory. The goal was to develop a nuclear-powered upper stage for intercontinental ballistic missiles, one that used a nuclear reactor to superheat hydrogen as propellant creating far greater thrust and nearly double the efficiency of traditional chemical engines. After the Sputnik crisis in 1958, the project was transferred to NASA and later expanded into a larger program called NERVA Short for Nuclear Engine for Rocket Vehicle Application. Beginning in 1961, it became a joint effort between NASA and the AEC focused on building and testing a complete nuclear rocket engine for future space missions, including potential crewed missions to Mars. Other ambitious concepts also emerged like Project Orion, which explored the wild idea of using nuclear pulse propulsion, literally detonating small atomic bombs behind a pusher plate to propel a spacecraft forward. Technically, the results were impressive. Under Project Rover and Nerva engineers developed three major reactor types, Kiwi, Phoebus, and Pewi, each proving stable nuclear control and generating up to 4,000 megawatts of thermal power. The system achieved a specific impulse of 825 seconds, nearly twice that of chemical engines, making a round trip to Mars possible in just a few months, instead of nearly a year. To understand how remarkable that is, let's compare it with one of today's most advanced chemical engines, SpaceX's Raptor 3. Suppose SpaceX launches a Starship version 3 for a Mars test flight in 2028. Equipped with six Raptor 3 engines, three optimized for sea level, and three for vacuum. Each vacuum optimized engine produces around 306 tons of thrust, with a specific impulse of about 380 seconds, giving the vehicle a total thrust of roughly 18 meganewtons and a delta VI capacity of about 7 to 8 kilometers per second after a full orbital refueling with 1,500 tons of methalox. 
To reach Mars, the spacecraft would typically use a Hohmann transfer orbit, an energy-efficient elliptical trajectory that requires about 4.3 km cess of delta V from low Earth orbit to begin the Trans-Mars injection, or TMI. With the performance of Raptor 3 Starship could easily achieve that velocity. The only challenge left is time even on the most favorable launch window. The distance between Earth and Mars can still be around 54.6 million kilometers, meaning the journey would take several months to complete. Although the Raptor 3 is incredibly powerful, it's still not enough to significantly shorten the travel time to Mars below six months. When using a Hohmann transfer orbit, an orbit designed for maximum energy efficiency, not speed, faster trajectories such as 80 to 90 day transfers would require a much higher delta V, around 10 to 12 kilometers per second, which is beyond Starship's capability, even with full orbital refueling. The limitation comes from both the fuel mass and the need to slow down upon arrival at Mars, which also consumes a large amount of energy. As a result, with Raptor 3's performance and a realistic home and transfer strategy, the travel time to Mars for Starship version 3 would still be quite long. And as you can imagine, if that mission carried a crew, spending such an extended period exposed to cosmic radiation and microgravity would pose serious health risks for the astronauts. So, why not integrate a nuclear thermal propulsion system into Starship? With NTP, a fission reactor heats liquid hydrogen to extremely high temperatures and expels it through a nozzle to produce thrust. Uranium is the heat source, not a fuel that's burned. The core idea is simple and mechanical. Hydrogen is pumped through the reactor core, where it heats to several thousand Kelvin, over 2,500 degrees Celsius, turning into a high-pressure gas. That hot gas is then blown through specially made high-temperature alloy nozzles at very high speed, creating thrust. In a practical Starship NTP layout, the engine would be activated only after reaching orbit for safety. The design would include large LH2 tanks plumbing to feed hydrogen through the core, a reactor sized for chamber temperatures of a few thousand Kelvin, and a thick radiation shield. Materials like boron are used to protect crew and avionics from neutrons and gamma rays. The engine cluster would be throttleable and restartable, capable of multiple burns, typically on the order of about one hour each enough for sharp impulsive boosts or long, steady burns to shape the trajectory. The key advantage is specific impulse. Historical NTP tests and literature point to ISP 800-900S, compared with roughly 450S for the best chemical engines. That roughly doubles exhaust velocity, so for the same initial mass, an NTP system needs far less propellant or can deliver much greater delta V. Practically, that allows high acceleration or high continuous delta V flight profiles and could cut Mars transit times dramatically from many months to a few months, around two months, or optimistically 45 days in best case scenarios. A realistic Starship NTP setup would use four to six mid-sized nuclear engines powered by a reactor producing a few hundred to around 1,000 megawatts of heat. Inside temperatures could reach over 2,000 Kelvin, hot enough to turn liquid hydrogen into high-speed exhaust gas. This system could perform both short, powerful burns to boost speed quickly and long, steady burns to keep accelerating over time. Combined with its much higher efficiency, that's what allows travel times to shrink so dramatically, potentially cutting a Mars trip from many months to just a few dozen days. But the challenges are massive. Those giant hydrogen tanks need to stay extremely cold for weeks, which is very hard to maintain in space. The fuel lines and nozzles have to survive incredible heat and radiation. The crew and electronics would need heavy shielding for protection. And beyond the technical side, there's the issue of safety and approval. Launching a nuclear reactor into space isn't something any government will take lightly, especially when Starship launches happen at Starbase right next to the Mexican border. Even launches from Florida are close to the coastline. If something went wrong during liftoff, the consequences would be huge, not just in terms of safety, but legally, SpaceX could face massive lawsuits or even lose launch approval altogether. The next big issue is thrust. Nuclear engines work by using a fission reactor to heat up a propellant, usually liquid hydrogen, and push it through a nozzle to produce thrust. But that thrust is actually lower than what chemical engines like Starship's Raptor can deliver, which are designed to produce massive power at liftoff to overcome Earth's gravity. 
Nuclear engines only show their real advantage once they're in space thanks to their much higher specific impulse, meaning they're far more efficient for long-duration burns. That's why one possible solution could be to combine both systems using Raptor engines for the initial liftoff, then switching to nuclear propulsion once Starship reaches orbit. In theory, Starship could carry a separate nuclear module powered by liquid hydrogen, which would activate only after leaving Earth's atmosphere. This hybrid setup could offer the best of both worlds strong chemical thrust to escape Earth and efficient nuclear propulsion for interplanetary travel. However, this approach brings its own set of challenges, the added weight of two propulsion systems, the complexity of integrating them safely, and of course, the higher cost. So, what do you think would equipping Starship with a nuclear propulsion system actually be possible? Or is it still just science fiction? For now, share your thoughts below. Overall, even though no nuclear-powered rocket has ever flown, space agencies around the world are increasingly viewing nuclear propulsion as the key to faster interplanetary travel. The longer you stay in space, the more health risks you're exposed to, said Professor Wong from Ohio State University, one of the authors of a new NASA-funded study on CNTR technology. So, if we can shorten that time even further, it would be a huge benefit. Traditional nuclear thermal rockets use solid uranium fuel for fission reactions, heating liquid hydrogen until it expands and rushes out of the nozzle at extremely high velocity to generate thrust. In contrast, the centrifugal nuclear thermal rocket, or CNTR, uses liquid uranium inside a rotating cylinder. This design maximizes fission reactions and significantly improves engine efficiency potentially making it one of the most powerful propulsion systems ever conceived for deep space travel. Hydrogen doesn't have to be the only propellant either. Many other materials could be used, some of which might even be extracted from asteroids, comets, or Kuiper Belt objects along the way, allowing missions to refuel and travel far deeper into the solar system.